whole objective of our project is the Holocaust from a religious Orthodox perspective, which is very different than most of the other Holocaust venues in the world, or the other Holocaust museums, in that they're more general in terms of the overall view of the Holocaust. We look at, um, first of all, the history of European Jewry, um, how our communities, our Kahillists, developed in Europe with, with a very rich, long history. Um, the circumstances that led up to the war, the history of anti-Semitism, uh, this is, this is a, a part of education that our children need to understand the circumstances of where we evolved from. So the Bible was the, the last time you heard from the son was sometime in 1940. Right, right, right. But if you look, right. you see look, right. right. look at all the same like you boys, right? Mishnayas, people that were in right? right. Same like you boys. Got a report card, right? Had to take it home. Right, so now that if you came home, you told your parents, I got a doll, that wouldn't be too good. Hi, my name's Bill Rosenberg. This is the uniform of my father, Bernie Rosenberg. On May 5th, 1944, Bernie, a nice Jewish boy from East 21st Street in Brooklyn, was with the Thunderbird, Thunderbird Division, the 11th Armored Division of Patton's Third Army, and he was part of the liberation of Northhausen concentration. And a few days after the liberation, my father sent a letter to my grandparents and to his younger sister talking about the horrors that he saw upon the liberation. And he still remembered to his dying day the smell of the liberation um, and it had a lasting impact. But the letter he wrote to his parents talked about the sense of loss of hope and loss of belief. How can these poor souls reconstitute their life? And that's why I feel so fortunate that my father's uniform and his collection of artifacts are part of the Crime and Holocaust Education Center because this shows a rebirth. It shows hope. It shows belief. How not only humankind, but the Jewish people have reconstituted ourselves, have grown and reestablished that sense of hope and belief in ourselves and in our religion. And my father had a saying that was very important. Every time we would read the Sefer, le door, le door, from generation to generation. And that's what, for me, this is about. My father's uniform and his artifacts are part of going to the next generation. So, so the next generation will know what we experience, but also that hope and belief are what sustain us going forward. So, you know, door for door, may we know only happiness going forward. And it's an honor to have the artifacts and my father's uniform, Bernie Rosenberg's uniform, as part of the Kleinman Holocaust Education Center. The 11th Army Division of Patton's Third Army liberated a very famous castle called Coburg Castle. Upon the liberation of Coburg Castle, in one of the offices on the wall, there was a Nazi flag. And my father took this flag off of the wall upon the liberation of Coburg Castle. There are other cards that are not on display here. We used as Nazi propaganda to indoctrinate the younger children in Germany uh, about the evils of the Jewish people. And they depicted the Jewish people in the most horrendous circumstances. So they used these playing cards. They were like playing cards, like we used to have baseball cards. They had these kind of playing cards uh, that was part of the propaganda machine. So Eisenhower wanted documentation of what the troops found upon the liberation. So he ordered that a recreation of the moment of liberation take place. So if I have my historical facts correct, the liberation was actually on May 5th, and this picture was on May 6th. We shouldn't forget that there are people 
who experienced the Holocaust, who literally sacrificed everything to maintain their namuna, to maintain their faith in the Yibayinah Shleilam, and it's because of those sacrifices that you boys are able to be here today, and we're able to celebrate with Menachem putting on his tefillin in the presence of Mrs. Kleinman, the great-grandmother of Menachem, and his grandfather of Ellie Kleinman. That is what we should never forget. Our whole um, focus is to educate, to remember what happened not so long ago. Um, we're in a different circumstance of life now, 71 years after the end of the war and the liberation of the concentration camps, but it's not that long ago. I don't think that she thought in 1944, when she was sitting in a cattle car on the way to Auschwitz from the ghetto in Hungary, uh, that she would ever see a day like this. She didn't even think about being able to get out of the concentration camp, let alone surviving, and finding a husband in DP camp and having children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So, and great-great-grandchildren. I remember standing in Auschwitz uh, about a year and a half ago, which is actually the first time that I went. And uh, my mother told me where she was in, in terms of the, her, her uh, bunker, her uh, barracks number. And I looked it up on the chart in Birkenau, and I saw the exact spot. It's no longer standing. It's level. Most of the barracks are level. But I saw the exact barracks that she was in. Uh, Rabbi Bolt from Darche Torah is here, representing Rabbi Bender. Uh, it's an extraordinary yeshiva that does the first to jump in to do things that are important. And they certainly did in terms of Holocaust education. And um, I, I want to thank Rabbi Bender publicly for what he's, what he's done and what he's accomplished and what he continues to accomplish. We don't know who you are. We don't know who you are. But we all love you and we want to do the, whatever we can to keep that going. So Except only for me. So when he sent papers for the parents, then uh, it, it came to the police station, yeah, and she could not go out. So she threw out of the window. This is what they told me. Uh, uh, this, this cloth was found by Mrs. Felsenberg, mm -hmm. um, who volunteers at this center. And uh, this is remarkable because it is a cloth that was rolled up like a cigarette paper and smuggled out of the ghetto, out of the Vitel, the detention camp in France. And my father wrote it, his name was Dr. Hillis Eidman, and he addressed it to Jakob Rosenheim and to Arthur Fink. Jakob Rosenheim was the head of Aguda at the time in America, and Arthur Fink, also known as Ancho Fink, was his cousin in America. And it's very dramatic for me to be here today with my mother. Uh, I'm very honored to be here, but I want to just say that Arthur Fick's grandson is married to my daughter, and they just celebrated the bar mitzvah of their son, El Lazar, the Shabbos. So it's interesting how everything pulls together so many years later. This is an, a souvenir for when one would visit the Auschwitz Museum back in the 50s or whatever they would be able to pick this up. It's pictures of the Auschwitz camp. People in the camps, you know, the prisoners, the, the Jews, wanted to, to show the Americans that they were, so they took whatever material they could find, they took some tin, whatever they could find, and made American flags to show the Americans how happy they were to see them. Okay. This is a collection done by a researcher in Texas, Brian Riggs, who was studying Nazis who were actually Jewish, who, you know, didn't, either didn't recognize they were being Jewish or didn't know they were Jewish, and had certain dispensation by Hitler to be able to be a Nazi. So you've got and this box is interesting. For instance, you have the passport here of a Nazi soldier. And um, if you I, if you really want to get more information, I'd have to ask David to explain it to you more, but this is an example of a Nazi passport, Nazi documents. Father Patrick Dubois, his, he is conducting research in the Ukraine and in East, deep Eastern Russia and uncovering mass graves that were never accounted for. And it, these are primarily the shtetlach that were being destroyed by the Einsatzgruppen. 
and he's called his, his book uh, Holocaust by Bullets because the, the rule was one bullet per Jew. So he can count the number of bullets he's finding in these sites to get an, an estimation of how many Jews are actually buried there. And he's found I don't know, numerous, numerous sites. He's got a whole few teams out there doing research. According to his research, um, he is estimating that the number of Jews killed is closer to 7.5 to 8 million presently. And he's still doing research. And um, our history shows very clearly that civilizations have come, civilizations have gone, major civilizations, all trying to destroy Jews in Yiddishkeit. And yet we survive, and here we are, and we persevere, and we grow, and we continue to grow. And the importance of our, our future, our children and grandchildren, is that they have to protect that. And that. But one way to protect that is to understand what happened all those years ago, and to be cognizant of what goes on in the world. So that's the purpose of our mission. It's education, it's history, perspective, and meaning.